Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and today we're going to be talking about the three new skill pitches that Jagex threw out there. Um, actually, by the time this video comes out, you'll be able to vote for which of these skill pitches that you like the most. I'll be trying to put this video out right about when the vote starts. The vote starts at like 4 a.m. my time, video comes out at like 8 a.m. my time. But anybody who is interested in voting on the new skill, if you haven't voted yet, or maybe you have, and you're just interested in hearing some of my opinions on it, we're going to go over each of the three new skills here somewhat briefly and just talk about uh, what they've given us for an idea on the gameplay and my feelings on that on, on each of the three skills if you don't know exactly how the process works at the moment uh, this is just step one where we're voting in one of these three skills potentially and after step one they're going to refine it we're gonna get a lot more information about the balance and the speed of the skill how much XP an hour how much GP an hour uh, if any GP an hour exactly but just the idea like a lot more details will be coming in hot after this vote the whole point of this vote was just to give a basic idea of how the gameplay might look and which of the three skills you think looks most interesting so they could then put all of their effort to make that one skill like a, a little bit more refined than what we have at the moment Jagex has put out a lot of information though They got like a two and a half hour uh, Q&A blog and like another hour and a half video that discusses a lot of information about the new skills There's also a very lengthy blog post that we will be referencing fairly often in this video I'm not trying to repeat hundred percent of the information that Jagex has given us or else I would also have a long video here I'm just go going over some of the basics of the skill and then giving you my opinion on how cool or maybe not cool it looks. I will say in general, uh, I'm a little bit easy to please, not much of a critic on the idea of a new skill. Uh, I would like a new skill in general in the game, I think it would be a lot of fun, so it really is gonna have to be like pretty bad for me to want to vote no in general, but that doesn't mean that uh, I don't have a favorite of these three. First of all, I'm gonna go over the taming skill. This one's pretty interesting on paper. It does look like summoning so much that they had to put in the disclaimer that no, this is not gonna be summoning by the way. You just see that you'll have some sort of follower and you're gonna benefit because of that and you think oh, it's probably gonna be summoning I think any of these three skills could be compared to like other skills and other ideas in some way shape or form no new skill idea is gonna be like so unique that you can't compare it to any other piece of content that's already been pitched or maybe added to one of the versions of the game in some way like it's just gonna be our version of the skill for sure discover new and existing creatures around the world and tame them into friendly companions earn their trust and take care of them and in return they'll aid you in your adventures with your new taming skill you'll be able to befriend creatures around Galenor and take advantage of their unique abilities to explore the world in entirely different ways deepen your bond with new companions by training them up and making their abilities even stronger so already something that would be different from summoning Summoning, once you unlock, like, a familiar, you just get to use that pouch, and, like, you get that familiar for a couple minutes, like, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in this case, it looks like you would get a follower, and then you had to level up that follower, and you would kind of have more of a permanent bonus as long as you had them with you, but it's not like once you unlock the follower, now you just have whatever their boost is. Like, leveling them up is actually going to benefit them. This core gameplay loop is what I wanted to look at mostly. Uh, domesticate a creature in your world, care for your new companion, and train and level up your friend. The caring for your new companion uh, could very much be like taking care of like a cat, which is not super exciting. Here's a little more details on it. The actual taming process differs depending on which creature you're trying to tame. Lassos, uh, different kinds of food, even toys might all be useful. Taming the creature would give XP, but the bulk of your training will come from caring for your companion. So you'll, you'll get XP by like first getting the companion, and you could use, it's gonna be similar to hunting in a lot of ways. Once you've tamed a creature, a big part of the skill will be looking after it. Provide it with its favorite foods, build a new cozy home, and keep it active. Do all this and you'll have a loyal companion. So again, somewhat similar to taking care of a cat, maybe just like a revamped version of that. And then a strong bond to form with your animal companion allows you to use their unique abilities and engages in fun activities with them, ranging from traversing dangerous dungeons to playing a good old game of fetch. This could be the fastest way to train and level up your companion, granting taming XP. Bro, the traversing dungeons got me a little more interested. I wonder exactly how uh, just doing like raids and specific like slayer tasks and stuff might make your um, your companion like higher level and stuff like that. it would be interesting. This actually could be uh, somewhat more interesting gameplay than just like raising a cat again. Here's that summoning disclaimer. Yeah, it's not going to be like summoning, by the way. The core of the taming skill has you training your companion and using its abilities. So the animal abilities could be like a range of things. So uh, they see here, some will unlock new areas, some will help with existing skills, some could help with combat. Although, as we said before, we're treading carefully when it comes to combat. It's true, they could make that shit very overpowered very easily. Uh, but also, things could be able to like find hidden treasure or dig up buried artifacts. It would be cool, like you could use it just to, to go out and loot in general. This could be a money-making thing too. And then a little more information on the training activities. Once you've tamed your companion, 
and fastest way to train will be by testing his metal dedicated taming activities around Galenor. Some companions might find it enjoyable to do obstacle courses. There's elaborate mazes, dangerous dungeons. I I'm interested in the dungeons, dude. Uh, I feel like companion dungeons could be kind of intense. Could be pretty cool. The reward space really comes down to like the abilities we were just talking about before. They could buff other things in general, but also it could just be fun gameplay, some extra companionship. I feel like pets are generally pretty popular, and now we could be adding like helpful abilities and buffs from the pets. I think taming looks pretty fun. Uh, I enjoy pet hunting in general. I don't know how it'll affect pets that are already in the game. I feel like somewhat minimally, I, I feel like they don't want to put huge buffs on pets that are already in the game because most of them are supposed to be kind of rare. And if you went really dry on a pet that you needed for a good buff, that could be super annoying. I don't know if that's quite where they're going with it. Let's ask the real expert how they feel about taming. She don't care. The feeding and taking care of your companion part. That's what excited her the most. Taming's a pretty cool one, but we're moving on to talk about shamanism now. Study the magical power of nature through shamanism and unlock the ability to perform rituals. First of all, this was brought up on stream that like shamanism, not necessarily an S tier name for it, which I do agree with, but I also, I don't have a great idea for another name. But even on the Q&A that Jagex put out, they said like they were they were working with other names at times too and just shamanism is what they landed on. And honestly, the more you say it, the more it fits. Just at first, when I knew there were three new skills, I was like, it's taming, sailing, and like, what's that other one? Gather components, perform rituals, and infuse objects with the magic of the spirit realm, create powerful items like tikis, totems, and poultices, and augment your equipment with powerful new effects. The mastery of shamanism will unlock your third eye and gain access to the spirit realm, bro. The third eye. Let's look at that gameplay loop. Forage for natural components, gather spiritual components, draw a ritual circle, and create powerful shamanic items. So it's going to be mostly a gathering skill. Uh, they talked about they also want it to be like a lot of untradeable gathering stuff, so... Most of it won't be viable in general. I feel like it would be convenient if at least some of the rewards that come out of this are tradable in some way, shape, or form. I think that's good for the market if the new skill has new tradable items that people are willing to spend money on. The idea that somebody with enough money could just buy the new resources and get to 99 really quickly, that already, that, that sucks too. So I don't want any like the training to be viable. I do agree with that. But I would like maybe some of the rewards to be tradable in some way. Just foraging for natural components is probably going to be very similar to like fishing and whatnot, or maybe even a little more herbivore related, but with just uh, spots in the ground instead of like poking for the herbivore, you're just like picking up the mushrooms and whatnot and the plants that you're looking for. But then the, the spirit stuff, disturbed sites are located around Gelenor with a special connection to the spirit realm. You can gather and find spiritual components here. It's probably going to be a similar gameplay just in the spirit realm instead, which could involve more obstacles and whatnot and be a lot more interesting, but it's still, it's just gonna be a gathering skill for the most part. From there, you would draw a ritual circle anywhere in the world. Uh, yeah, similar to like starting a fire, you just draw a ritual circle and then just start to just crush some uh, whatever, whatever components you have gathered and make some tikis out of it. So what these tikis and these totems end up doing, these augments, that is something we don't really know yet because that's another thing that they're going to talk about uh, if shamanism were to move on to the, the next round of voting. That's where they'll refine it a little bit more. You could have tikis and totems that really did anything. It could boost your damage, could boost your defense, um, potions and food could do more. You could gather resources faster with them. You could bank your resources, whether any of those sound overpowered or underpowered. That's the kind of thing that the next round would discuss, and if you would like to see more about that, that's why you would be voting for shamanism. The disclaimer life is our wild card pitch. Instead of being a utility skill, it offers utility through the reward space. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how a utility skill should work, is being rewarded with good utility out of it. This makes sense. It's like a gathering skill, but it can be used to benefit any other skill. The gathering not in the spirit realm seems pretty straightforward, just going to, to pick leaves and stuff and bark and finding the right supplies. The spirit realm does seem potentially more interesting. The spirit realm is an alternate reality populated by spirits. Skilled shamans can harness the power of this realm as a source of their shamanic abilities, as well as the using these disturbed sites to cross over to the spirit realm itself, allowing you to explore mysterious new area. Spirit realm is a mirror of Galenor that you know and love, but it's subtly different. A locked door in the world might just open the spirit realm or vice versa. Mastery of shamanism will let you navigate the world by jumping between the two, unlocking new paths, and revealing hidden secrets. We don't quite know what the spirit realm will look like in the early stage. Should shamanism move on to the refinements phase, then that's actually really interesting. I don't know. I don't know exactly where they're going with the spirit realm. It could be the same gameplay that you get out of the, the overworld, just like a lot cooler to look at, but it it could be pretty interesting exactly how you have to harvest supplies. If it's not just like, oh, there's there's the pool of things that I need, go click on it and like wait there for a minute, you know, that 
that could be pretty boring and just be like every other gathering skill. Or you can make it a little bit more interesting. I feel like um, like herbivore is more interesting than just catching chinchampas for the most part. It's at least a little bit more engaging. Just keep uh, keep revamping it like that. Uh, the spirit realm could be pretty cool. The reward space they already kind of went over. We can get these uh, items that will. Overall, give you buffs in any way that you could think of. That's probably it's probably going to be a long list of buffs that they go over that they could add to the game if this were to move on to the next stage. And this could go for combat and skilling things in general. This any part of the game currently that you have to grind out, it is possible that they could make a shaman item that could buff that in some way. So honestly, shamanism is one of the safer routes to go. Shamanism makes a lot of sense for the game. Uh, it's like mostly a gathering skill. We have a lot of gathering skills in general. Uh, and you can make fairly interesting ways uh, to gather rather than just like chopping a tree down or picking some leaves. And the spirit realm looks like it might be able to do that. But then also it could add like the most buffs or be one of the simplest way to add more buffs to the game. Um, whether or not you like buffs to be added to the game. I feel like whatever new skill we get should give us some buffs or some effects in, in some way for the rest of the game. Like it shouldn't just be its own standalone thing that doesn't affect the rest of the game at all. Um, it could very much be overpowered too. The, those are the things that they're trying to talk about in the refinement stage though. So whether or not you think it's balanced or not, that really doesn't matter right now. I do think the idea of shamanism is very fitting to the game and could be very fun to train overall and get some of those dope buffs out of it. And the last pitch that I'll be going over here is sailing. Get ready to traverse the seas in search of adventure as you begin mastering the art of sailing. Whether you're an explorer discovering what lies beyond the horizon, a fisherman hoping for a monster catch, a pirate looking to sink every ship in sight, or even a courier looking to move goods from A to B, sailing has something to offer for everyone. So acquire a vessel, set forth, and travel Galenor like you've never traveled before. So the gameplay loop, navigate to a port, obtain a ship, and then engage in fun activities of the sea. Pretty straightforward. To get started on your sailing journey, you'll need to make your way to a port. Yeah, it's probably going to start at like Port Serum or Port Piscorilius very likely, but I bet you like each port ends up having something sailing related at it next you need to obtain a ship you'll have plenty of options to choose from whether you want to hire one purchase one steal one or even build one from scratch bro the steal one option already kind of interests me exactly how you go down with stealing a ship could be a very interesting uh very interesting interaction that could be its own mini game in general just requiring a ship there could be certain ships that you can only steal certain ships that you can only build blah 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 but like the stealing of the ship could be a wild activity where you gotta you fend off a whole crew of pirates, bro. What if some of them are pretty high level or have interesting mechanics to fight against instead of just like protect from melee the whole time? The quality of the ship will impact how far you're able to sail and how you'll fare at sea, although you need higher sailing levels to command the best quality vessels. Once you've obtained your ship, you can set sail and start doing seafaring activities. This could include searching for an elusive sea monster, finding new fishing spots, or just seeing what else exists across the far-reaching seas of Galenor. I feel like um, a lot of the stuff that would happen on the boat that would be interesting would involve either like one of those sea monsters attacking the boat or like another crew attacking your boat could be pretty wild. But then also when you get to the island, wherever you're sailing and you're trying to find some treasure or maybe you are fighting a boss on that island or, you know, finding new fishing spots and new, uh, new materials to be able to gather, there could be a lot of gameplay in there. The old disclaimer, dude. Feedback on the previous sailing pitch told us that some players viewed as a meme. Yeah, by the way, they're not memeing. This is a real pitch and it's not going to be player-owned ports from RS3 is what the disclaimer is saying. This is... This is a real unique sailing pitch that they're giving us. That's so sad that they have to put that, that disclaimer in there. They're like, this is not a meme. Like, we're trying. At least check it out. Some people are like, nah, dude, you're just memeing me. Bro, just sailing. Okay, guys, sailing. We plan for seaborne activities to make up the bulk of your sailing training, and it also makes up most of the reward space for the skill. We like to focus on navigating as a core mechanic. This will be a huge part of the skill, so it's important that it feels natural. The current uh, click-to-move system might feel weird in the open seas. We've been toying with a few unique options, like a unique pathing algorithm, keyboard controls, or even a special navigating interface. Uh, using WASD would be kind of interesting for the ship. This is one of the many things we like to discuss during refinement, and you can bet you'll get lots of opportunities to try this mechanic in the beta. Yeah, I feel like sailing is going to require like a couple steps in the beta if it does make it because it could be pretty complicated however navigating would be a bit boring if the seas maintain its current copy pasted blue texture with the skill launch we would fully update the oceans with deep waters coral reefs sea currents storms loads of other oh yeah going through like a storm and stuff there could be a lot of different things that happen to you out in the water so even just traveling from point a to point b sailing could have a lot of different gameplay and then on its own it could be used to unlock a lot of other areas for a lot of different gameplay we don't like the idea of giving you xp for navigating around aim Aimlessly. After all, you don't train agility by walking, though that would be dope. 
Uh, instead, we plan to introduce a variety of activities you can take part in. This will be the bread and butter of the skill, and the means which you get the vast majority of your sailing XP. Our current suggestions include deep sea fishing, hunting elusive sea creatures, delivering packages from A to B, and then uncovering new islands to explore. Yeah, I feel like I would enjoy the boat getting attacked by like sea creatures, like giant sharks and, and the Kraken or other ships of pirates and whatnot. Could be NBC ships, could be other player ships. There could be a PvP aspect to this too, would be pretty cool. You could be using your cannons to fight the other ship or you could jump onto the other boat and actually use like your combat gear to fight. But also the idea of just being like a simple delivery ship could still be somewhat active and you don't really need much combat and just being like... We're chartering this stuff, these packages that people needed all the way across the ocean and still get some solid XP for it. And for the passive gameplay, things that you can do alongside training the skill to give small amounts of XP, such as recording your adventure in the captain's log or dealing with random encounters, just like the rest of the world, the sea is alive and full of danger. Yeah, so I do like the idea of any skill should have some sort of active gameplay that is a lot more rewarding. And then passive gameplay, where maybe you can just do it on the side, AFK it a little bit, and still get some XP for it. So I like the idea that they've been putting a little bit of both. So for the reward space, they're looking at mostly like rewarding you with more sailing things. Uh, you'll get to customize your ship and show off your sailing achievements, similar to the way we currently let you decorate your player-owned house. Of course, some of you might prefer to just focus on having the most efficient vessel, and that's fine too. We might even look at the option of having multiple ships for different purposes, which would be pretty cool. Perhaps the most exciting part of sailing, though, is that you'll finally be gaining access to part of the game that's been blocked since you left Tutorial Island. Ever wonder what's beyond the little bit of coastline that you see? Yeah, it's going to be cool that we get more land and whatnot for it, but um, there's not really that much detail in what they're thinking for the rewards right now. So I feel like what the reward space currently is missing is something that would actually affect things that aren't sailing now at the very least when you unlock an island there could be places at new islands that are going to be like a lot better to train certain skills fishing and wood cutting even combat related things there could be new bosses that are locked behind sailing it would be pretty easy to just at least make sailing some sort of unlocking uh thing where like not a lot of things that you get that affect other skills are actually sailing related necessarily but they could be they were talking about also like uh, if you wanted a new farming skill out there, then they could make like farming coral be a thing and that would be very sailing related and also affect uh, in-game stuff. I think they should add some sort of like untradeable uh, reward thing like like booty. Let's add a little bit of booty to the game. Let's say anytime that you get a treasure chest or you loot another ship or even just payment for delivering packages from point A to point B, you get a little bit of booty and then you can go to some shops at some of the ports and you can spend booty on items that are only available in those shops or even maybe items that are available so you could trade them and make some money out of it. But those items that would only be available at those shops could be things that actually give buffs. There could be artifacts that you either bring with you uh, in your inventory or they can even add like another gear slot so that you can wear the artifact and that artifact gives you some sort of bonus while you're either skilling or doing combat. It could give the same reward space that shamanism could give basically. Instead of tiki's and totems, it just gives you some sort of artifact that you could use. Um, so there could be a lot more to do on the reward space, I think. Um, I like the idea that it's expandable, but I, I do hope that they do a little more to that. So the summary is basically saying what I was saying, that sailing gives a lot of opportunity to add more content to the game. Um, I think that's it's going to be a little bit vague until it gets to the next round, though, like exactly what they want. Uh, I think pretty clearly new islands would have like new fishing spots, maybe new trees or like better spots for trees and stuff like that. Like different skilling spots you've seen or even more monsters and combat places. Like they could easily put a new boss out there and whatnot. But I also hope that they look into being able to, to buy some unique things out of sailing that give you rewards. Maybe even similar to that shamanism reward table. Let's just take a look at the three questions in the poll and go ahead and get out of here. I think I was a little lengthy with each of the skills. I wanted to be fairly brief on it, but you could talk about each of the three skills for quite some time. I feel like they put a lot of work into those pitches, and that's really it's good news for us that we have a lot of information, even just in this first stage, where it's only just supposed to be a little bit about gameplay. So question one is just going to be like, which of these do you think that they should try to refine even further? So it's um, it's not just choosing one though. In the first question, you could either skip it, say you didn't like any of them, or you could check off all three, sailing, taming, and shamanism, if you wanted more information about them in the long run. Uh, question two is where you're going to pick your favorite, rather. Likely, whichever one wins question two, whichever of these three skills gets the most votes on question two, that's where we're going to see a lot more information about over the next few months during the refining stage. Overall, I'm a fan of all three of these skill pitches I think each of the three uh, could be very interesting in the game I'll have a very fun time training the new skill to 99 and I will be making a series out of it either way the one I am most interested in is definitely sailing though so I am leaning 
a good old sailing vote, but I think shamanism is a close second. And honestly, even though taming still sitting three out of three for me, taming could be a lot of fun too. Taming could be some of the more interesting buffs in the game too. Uh, taming could be taming could be crazy. So Pokemon Simulator, uh, Nature Spirit two and Sea of Thieves life. I think Sea of Thieves is where I'm leaning the most. Uh, sailing could be a lot of fun, but I'm very excited to see whichever skill moves on, what they're gonna do in the refining stage to try to actually get this new skill in the game. Ideally, we just get a new skill in Old School RuneScape, to be honest. I would like to train a new skill. Whichever one is gonna do the best and actually make it into the game is kind of the most interesting for me, but uh, I think just whichever one passes question two here is generally gonna have the best odds of moving on in the next round. Now, if this new skill Skill gets into the game and everybody likes the new skill for the most part wh whichever the two skills that didn't make it past this round actually have a pretty good chance of showing up again in the future and we could eventually have all three of these in the game if they really did well we got a little wordy in this one let's go ahead and, and fade it out a little bit we'll hang out with uh we'll hang out with the doge one more time thank you for watching me stumble over the brand new skill pitches everybody i appreciate you good luck on the gains i will see you probably probably not next week i was gonna say that i would see you next week because you know that's when the vote is over but it's not going to be like immediately we get new refinement pitches on these new skills. It'll probably be like a couple months before we have more information about the new skill. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and best of luck on your gains.